Hello everyone. This video will discuss the basic structure and purpose of MARC authority records. An authority record is a record of the decision of the authoritative form of a name, a name title, uniform title, or subject used as a heading in a bibliographic record. A name heading may be a personal name, corporate name, a meeting, or a geographic name. A name title heading consists of both a name and a title of a work. A uniform title heading consists of a title not associated with a particular author. A subject heading may be a single term, phrase, or a group of terms. So let's briefly review the purpose of authority records. First, authority records help maintain consistency through authority control. That is, using the established form of a heading whenever the heading is needed as an access point in a bibliographic record. Second, authority records provide cross-references for other forms of a heading. These are the C references, or the 400 fields in an authority record, which are not valid in a bibliographic record, but they refer to the authorized form of the heading. Authority records also may provide cross-references for equally valid headings, and these are the C also references, or the 500 fields in an authority record. Authority records also disambiguate similar or identical headings, for example, by providing additional information about a name, such as the middle name or dates. Finally, authority records help to collocate or bring together similar things. For example, authority records for uniform titles help bring various manifestations of a work together that otherwise may bear different individual titles. I'll show examples of each of these in the upcoming slides. MARC authority records, like MARC bibliographic records, contain fixed field elements, a leader and an 008, and variable fields. And the variable fields consist of three character tags, two indicators, and two subfield characters, a delimiter and a subfield code, which precedes the subfield data. I won't be able to cover all the details in this video, but you can find much more information about MARC authority records on this LC website, Understanding MARC Authority Records. You can also find detailed help for each field by going to LC's MARC 21 format for authority data and OCLC's authorities format and indexes. We'll first look at the most important variable fields, and then we'll look at these fields in some actual authority records and some of the fixed field elements that are important to understand. These are the functional tag groups for variable fields in an authority record, and the first character of the tag tells you the function. X here in this schematic is just added to mean the second two numbers will vary. So for the functional tag groups, the 1XX is the heading or the authorized form of the heading. This is the heading that should also be in a bibliographic record. The three XX fields are related information, usually information about a name heading. Four XXs are the C references, as mentioned earlier. The five XXs are the C also references. The six XXs are the notes, which are added when the authority record is created or edited to especially help identify a person. These may contain information about works the person has written, for example. The second and third characters in the tag indicate the specific type of information for the 1XX, 4XX, and 5XX fields. So, for example, if the last two characters are a zero and a zero, that would be a personal name a 1-0 corporate name, 11 meeting names, 30 uniform titles, 48 chronological terms, 50 topical terms, and so on. So the authorized form of a heading for a personal name would be a 100 in an authority record. The authorized form for a corporate name would be a 110 in an authority record. And the authorized form for a subject heading would be a 150 in an authority record, and so on. This table shows the type of heading in the first column, the authority tag for the authorized form of the heading in the second column, and the bibliographic tags which the authority tag controls in the last column. So for example, a 100 tag in an authority record for a personal name controls a 100 personal name tag in a bibliographic record, in addition to the 600 field for a name used as a subject, and the 700 field for a name used as a name added entry in a bibliographic record, and so on. And by control, we mean that this is the form of heading that should appear in those fields as needed in a bibliographic record. If you're using OCLC Connection or Record Manager, 
we say that the headings are control in a bibliographic record when they are linked to their respective authority records. The three XX fields were added to supply additional information related to name headings, which can help identify the correct name. They may include a general 368 for other attributes, a 370 for an associated place, a 372 for a field of activity, and so on. The four XX fields in an authority record are the C references, as mentioned earlier, and they direct a user from a variant form of a name or subject to the authoritative form. The headings in the 4XX field in an authority record are not valid in a bibliographic record, but they serve as cross-references to the established form of heading in the 1XX. The 5XX C also references in an authority record are cross-references to a related heading, for example, a broader or narrower term. The C also references would also have their own authority records in which they appear as the 1XX field. The 6XX notes fields contain general information about the established heading or more specialized information, such as citations for a consulted source. This is an authority record for Agatha Christie. So the authorized form of the name appears in the 100 form, Christie comma Agatha, with the dates 1890-1976. And this is the heading that should appear in a 100 or 700 personal name field in a bibliographic record or in a 600 field if the name is being used as a subject. And there are several 400 fields or C references in this record. They're not valid in bibliographic records, but they are in the authority record to refer to the 100 valid form of the heading Christie comma Agatha with the dates. This is a screenshot of the same authority record for Agatha Christie showing that there are two 500 fields in this record. And again, these are the C also references. These are valid but different forms of the name. And there would be separate authority records for each of these names as well. Mary West Maycott and Agatha Christie Malawan were other names that she used. This record also has several 670 fields which are notes for the source data found that was used to determine the identity. Typically, notes include references to published works by or about the person in which that form of name is used. They may also include citations to reference works in which that form of name is used or research notes for establishing the identity. This record also has a 670 Wikipedia note describing her birth name and pen names used. This is an authority record for the subject heading Beagle Dog Breed. So the valid form of the heading is in a 150, which controls a 650 field in the bibliographic record. And there are two 450 C references and one 550 C also reference. Subfield W in 4XX and 5XX fields indicate the type of cross reference. Codes in this subfield are defined by position. There are four possible positions. Positions that are not used will have N. For the 550 in this example, only the first position is used. So positions following this don't need the N. Subfield W first position appearing in a 4XX or 5XX field is a code for the relationship of the C or C also heading to the 100 heading in this record. So subfield WG in the 550 field in this example indicates this heading hounds is a broader term than the heading in the 100 field beagle dog breed. Authority records will also indicate if a heading can be subdivided geographically. This is in the 00806. A blank means the heading is not subdivided geographically. The code I indirect geographic subdivision means that the larger body would precede the smaller or more specific geographic location. For example, California, Los Angeles. And code N means geographic subdivision is not applicable to this heading. In this example authority record for the subject heading refugees, there is an I in the 00806. And that means that this heading can be geographically subdivided indirectly. LC Children's subject headings are simplified subject headings established and assigned by LC Children's Literature Cataloging section. 
These may be used primarily in public and or school libraries or in curriculum libraries in academic institutions. It's important to be able to identify these so they are not inadvertently used instead of a Library of Congress subject heading in your cataloging. For example, PIGS, the 150 authorized form in this LC children's heading, is simplified from the scientific name SWINE, which is a C reference or a 450 in this record. But SWINE happens to be the authorized form in the Library of Congress subject heading authority record. You can identify children's subject authority records because there will be the fixed field element subject, which is the 00811, and it will be coded B for children's. In addition, for children's headings, you will see the SJ prefix in the 010 LCCN field. Subject headings for LC and other thesaurus would also be indicated in 00811 of the authority record. This is the LC subject authority record for refugees. So the 00811 here is coded A for Library of Congress subject heading, and the prefix in the 010 field is SH, indicating that this is from Library of Congress subject headings thesaurus and not children's. Note that sometimes a heading may be exactly the same for LCSH and for LC Children's, as is the case for refugees, but you'll be able to distinguish these by the 00811 and the prefix in the 010. Another purpose of authority records is to disambiguate similar names. In this case, the valid form of heading for Jane Seymour, the third wife of King Henry VIII, includes subfield C for her title, Queen Consort of Henry VIII, King of England, and the dates 1509 to 1537 in subfield D. While the authority record for Jane Seymour, the English actress, includes her birth date 1951 in subfield D of the authority record. Another purpose of authority records is to collocate or bring together different names for the same thing. Uniform title headings serve this function. For example, something like the New King James Bible might be known by other names on various publications, but the uniform title and its corresponding authority record serve the purpose of bringing those identities together. So the authorized form in the 130 of the authority record is Bible, subfield L English, subfield S New King James. So the valid form for the uniform title in a bibliographic record would be the 130 in the authority record, Bible, English, New King James. The actual title on this item or manifestation is in the 245 field, the Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testaments, the New King James Version. Finally, a name title authority record, that is an authority record for the title of a work by a particular author or creator can also serve the purpose of providing a uniform title in the bibliographic record. For example, this is the authority record for what is popularly known as Beethoven's Choral Symphony. There is a 400 cross-reference in the authority record with subfield T, Choral Symphony. But the authorized form of the heading for the Choral Symphony is in the 100 field of the authority record and that is the name title entry, Beethoven, followed by subfield T, Symphonies Number no. 9, Opus 125, D minor. So in a bibliographic record, you would see a 100 entry for the authorized form for the name, Beethoven, and then the uniform title entry in the 240 there for the work, Symphonies Number no. 9, Opus 125, D minor. For additional help on working with authority records, please go to help.oclc.org and click Metadata. From there, you can select your cataloging interface, connection, or WorldShare Record Manager to get documentation and additional training. You can also click on Contact OCLC Support to find contact information for support in your region. Thanks for watching.